Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I will show you how I have implemented the um, newsletter feature on my website. It's currently not live, but I will show you how does it work. So you can basically subscribe and unsubscribe for newsletter. So you must have seen this on the website. So today I will show you how you can implement it using Django. So first of all, let me show you what are the tools that are we doing that we are going to use. The first tool is Celery, obviously to schedule task and to uh, send a synchronous mail that I will show you in a while what it is and how does it work now the second tool is obviously Django for the web framework that I'm using because I like it yeah it's cool and uh, now then you also need to use Redis you need to install Redis because we are going to use the Redis server by the way if you want the video on the deployment of uh, all of these stuff because you will see that I'm going to l run three specific things at a single a uh, single time so first thing we're going to run redis server to show you then i'm going to run my python django server and then i will show you then i will run the celery uh, worker as well as beat scheduler so this command will run both of them all right perfect so now you can see uh, what is happening here these are some scheduled tasks but let me show you how does it work so you can see the folder structure is kind of e easy peasy <laughs> so here we have a main application which is mailer that's uh, that is actually handling all of the mail portion so let's start with models right so we have two models. the first one is the newsletter which basically contains a email field and a date field which is basically indicating the time when the user uh, login so when the user uh, signed up for the mail list then we have one model which is schedule mail now what this model is actually responsible for is to send the mail so it it is basically going to be uh, the templates for the mails so you can see we have subject and then we have a field called message which is basically going to contain your message and it is going to be in markdown so i will show you how you can convert it into html as well and then you have a created ad field which is automatically adding to the date time then obviously you can see one thing that is important here because you might get confused later in this video so make sure to check this out so what it is doing it is whenever you do dot all or basically whenever you try to query this uh, model so it will the queries will be filtered by the negative order of created ads so the latest query will be the first result so later in the video which is this portion that i want to share in the uh, like later in the video you will see that we are trying to access the first element so this will be the latest element okay because of this filter here now again we have a method which is basically for stringifying it so this will basically uh, return uh, this subject so and then you have one property so this property is actually for converting your markdown content into HTML so what it does, it basically uh, converts and return the Markdown content. So we're using a library called Markdown2, which is like pretty easy. You just initiate it and then return the dot .convert and put the Markdown content, that's it. We have some helper function again for actually creating the um, newsletter thing, like you can subscribe and unsubscribe. For, unsubs for unsubscribing, I'm not using the password reset token which is like the most used one like because we generally tend to use the uh, password reset token which is actually present in Django out of the box now I'm using JWT so how does it actually work first of all I have encrypt mail which basically encrypts my mail you can see this is the payload and then we have the secret key which is the Django secret and then we're basically returning the encoded JWT token. And I have one more helper method, which is decrypt email, which basically decrypts the email. Now, one more thing to mention here is I'm using a option which is called verify expiration, expiration to false, because I don't want to verify the time. The whole idea behind this is to, uh, that the user can unsubscribe at any time, right? So that's why I'm using this flag here. So just m make sure to use it and then we're basically returning the email right when the decrypt happens and then i have one more helper function which is generate unsub url so as the name suggests it's basically generating unsubscribe url 
So you can see how does it actually work. So we are using the Django site framework. So if you know it, uh, that's cool. If you do not know it, just check out the documentation. You can basically add the name of your websites uh, using this model. So this model is actually out of the box from Django. So the whole idea is behind, we are basically trying to check a site whose name is dev, and then we're trying to access the domain, okay? So that I don't have to manually type my domain in it. And then you can see we're returning the full domain. Perfect, so this is these are some helper functions. Let's talk about actually integrating Celery. So Celery is a message queue, uh, or yeah, I would say it's a message queue. So first of all, you need to create a Celery.py in your main project directory. Remember, in the main project directory, then obviously this is actually just copy pasted code from the Celery in this file because they're basically initiating your Celery application. Let me show you one more thing. If I go to the settings, there are certain settings that you need to do. Obviously you need to import the stuff. But uh, if you come back over here, so this video is actually a high level understanding of how this thing works. If you want a full detailed video of implementing me from scratch, let me know. So here I'm using a database. Again, I'm using some remote database. So I am actually reading all of these credentials from a .n file. And then I have the salary. Uh, then obviously I'm using the email as well. So for the email, uh, I'm using the Gmail account. So that's why it is like smtp.gmail.com. And we're actually reading the hostname and password from the .n file, obviously. <laughs> and then we have some salary settings here. So you can see Redis. So when you deploy it, obviously you're going to change it, but actually you don't, you, you don't need to change it because when you are going to run Redis on your local machine, you will be able to access it using localhost. So yeah, then you are specifying the time zone and other things. So, and obviously we have a beat scheduler. So and now this thing is, uh, this thing over here, uh, if I show you, this is the name, you don't really, needed I actually have a shared task here so this is actually registered over here all right let me just show you how does it work now okay so now let's go to the task.py which is actually go going to contain certain tasks now if you are familiar with sending emails using Django then you might know that there is a function called send underscore mail which is actually present in Django core.mail. Now, in order to make it asynchronous, because when you're trying to send a mail directory, it will take a lot of time. I mean, depending upon the internet connection and other factors, but generally it's a good idea to actually make it asynchronous so that you can run this task on the background, right? So you don't really have to wait when you send a get or post request, you don't have to wait for the event to get completed, right? So this can actually get executed in the background. So this is why I have a, I am actually creating a asynchronous mail task. So this basically takes a bunch of parameter and send mail thought response to it, okay? So salary will be the one whose responsibility is to send or execute this method whenever you try to call it. So then I have one more function which is send schedule mails. So this method here, send schedule mails is basically responsible for sending schedule mail so what it does it basically reads uh, first of all the schedule mails first very first or i would say the latest uh, template for the mail and then it tries to send the message to all of the people which are actually present in our newsletter so you can see okay now another thing we are basically doing is creating a schedule task so currently i'm running it every minute but depending upon your need you will do it uh, different because uh, the good idea would be to send a mail daily or maybe in two days, maybe in three days, depending upon how you want to proceed. But the general idea, it is just for the testing purpose. That's why I did this. But generally you will, uh, you can handle it. And we don't need to pass these arguments, honestly. So I can just do this. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much it. Let me show you where the messages are getting sent, right? So let me show you these signals. So if you guys are not familiar with what Django signals are, so they are basically um, some methods or I would say events that gets fired whenever certain things happen in your database, okay? So we're using some, uh, uh, some signals here. The first one is obviously post save, then I'm using one signal which is post delete. 
So in order to use it, you can obviously import this decorator called at receiver from Django dispatch and then you pass the signal name here and then you provide the sender which is basically going to be the model. So basically what happens, what this line is doing, execute this method when something gets saved in your newsletter form, right? So basically what will happen whenever somebody tries to go into the mail and basically add or you know join the mail list, a mail will be fired or sent to him. So you can see we are creating unsub URL, I've already explained this method, right? Generate unsub URL. Then we have render to string. So this is actually a utility method which basically converts, or you know, yeah, it basically could, takes the Jinja uh, based HTML document and convert it into uh, HTML. So basically it will render the document and convert it into string and then we can send it. And again, we're using send async mail which was a created utility to send a synchronous mail and then you need to use dot delay method and then pass the all the arguments so this will be asynchronous and then in the same way we have post delete method so which will basically fired when somebody something gets deleted from the database and we're basically sending the um, unsubscribe.html file which is basically saying we will miss you let me show you how does it work right so The server is running. Mm, let's delete these messages first. All right, so now if I go to my website, uh, like Django admin panel here, and if you see in the newsletter form, so you can see there are no newsletter. So when I am going to add a newsletter like this, and if I save it, you will see a event will get fired in a moment you can see task send mail is fired and uh, so it is completed so if you go to the mail you can see you will receive this mail which is thanks for subscribing we have a template here and you will see that you have the link of the blog and the unsubscribe URL. so when you click on this button uh, it will unsubscribe so let me show you how does it work if I click here so basically we are, well, let me show you the views as well. So we have this unsubscribe view. We are basically trying to delete a specific email based on it, right? So if we are decrypting the mail and from the JWT token, and then we're trying to delete that, okay? So now if I try to click on this unsubscribe URL, so it will basically send this get request to it and along with the JWT token that you can see, and then we're basically uh, unsubscribed now if i try to go over here and try to see you will receive one more uh, message which is hello i'm vivek we are sad that you're leaving we will miss you hope to see you again or whatever this, this can be changed obviously depending upon your need and obviously we're not sending the unsubscribe you are here so yeah this is how the jo like joining the mail list and like removing from the mail or i would say like uh, unsubscribing from the mail works now I am getting some error here could not apply the schedule task every morning this takes zero positional argument but two were given so I actually changed the if I go to the task here so you will see that I actually change the task and uh, send schedule mail doesn't take any argument so let me just reload it. All right, so you can see it is running and we have one uh, task which is send schedule mails. So these tasks are actually the name, remember this, they are not the name of the function, they are actually the name that you provide using this decorator. So if you wait for a while, you will get a message because uh, Actually, currently there are no active users in the newsletter because I just unsubscribe it. So let me just add one. So I will add myself. So you can see task send mail will get fired and you, you will receive a mail in a moment. You can see you get the mail. This is the latest mail, right? <laughs> Zero minutes ago. And uh, 
now you can see this this task is also fired send schedule mails so it will pick the latest task uh, latest mail so you can see if i go to the schedule mails you will see that i have a i have one mail which is hello so this is basically the markdown content and this is the subject and if you see here in a minute you can see that this is received uh, and you can see the cool thing that it is actually converted into HTML on the fly or I would say like on the go whatever my English is poor anyway so what I'm gonna do is like go over here like and I will create a new scheduled email to show you how does it work and I will say hello again this is for YouTube video and then obviously if you know how does markdown works you can write a bunch of things hello world okay so for this example let's just make it simple so in a moment in a moment we should be receiving this latest mail so this is actually the old one because because of the reason that it is actually fired before adding that but in a moment after one minute we should be getting another mail so yeah this is how you can implement and this was actually the high level overview about implementing something right so this is how I have implemented it obviously there can be multiple ways to do one thing but if you need a video about making this whole application or um, implementing it in, in application in general then you can obviously just comment down and I will probably make a video so let's just wait for a moment and uh, we should be receiving it uh, so yeah let me see if I have uh, missed something so we have a serializer obviously we are just pay this is like the super simple model serializer that you can come up with uh, and obviously it is pretty simple we're just serializing all of the classes now you can see that it is actually being fired and this is for YouTube video and you can see hello world so this is how you can implement a newsletter thing from scratch in Django using uh, something called message queue um, and redis if you want the deployment video right how to deploy this whole infrastructure in the cloud let me know so yeah that's it bye